and pray without ceasing. All right. Uh, and tonight, for those that are that are listening by way of, of uh, online and YouTube, uh, we are uh, thankful for this midweek service. Once again, God's been faithful and God is good to us. And we're going to get into the word because faith comes by hearing. Amen. And hearing by the word of God. Let's turn there to uh, Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. And we want to, as we look at this, I'm telling you, it's going to help us uh, to navigate through these, uh, the maze that we ha- ha- have been in, navigating through the, uh, all of the, 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 the pitfalls and the, the, the peaks and the valleys that uh, we're seeing as we, again, as we go through and, and uh, navigate these, uh, these choppy waters, you know, that we've been dealing with the last uh, number of months. The good news again is that faith overcomes every obstacle set in front of it. Faith in God is simply faith in his word. And so we believe God that it shall be even as told us. Romans 10. And I want to start again with, uh, with uh, verse number seven, actually. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll move and see where, we, where we're led to go from here. But Romans 10, in fact, Romans 10 and 6 declares this, but the, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. And you will remember last week we talked about the importance of understanding our righteousness, that, that we have been given right standing with God the Father. Amen? And this should mean something to us. Right standing with God should mean something to us. In other words, when, when we are in fellowship with God and right standing with God, then that gives us power with God. All right, say it out loud. When we're in right standing with God and when we're in fellowship with God and we're walking with God, that gives us power with God. So, friends, this is what we must remember. And I believe that uh, as we uh, move forward and navigate through these uh, these these waters and sometimes uncharted waters, but but choppy waters, nonetheless, as we navigate through these waters, you all, it's going to be important for us to be cognizant of the power of God that's available to us. The power of God that's available to us. We want to be able to tap in to the power of God. How many know the power of God's real? And so part of our tapping in to the power of God is recognizing that the power has been placed in us. And the scriptures speak of uh, Uh, of those that in the last days that would have a form of godliness, but who would deny the power thereof. I mean, you know, there's power in this walk with God. And friends, when, uh, when we look at what we're facing today, it's going to be important that we recognize that we need the power of God in our lives. And we're going to need uh, to, to tap into this unlimited power uh, and from here on out. In other words, the, the power that we're going to need to stand against the things that are coming against us uh, is, 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 is going to be vital and essential, imperative even, that we, that we stand our ground, that we understand the truth 
and that we stand uh, staunchly in the truth, grounded, anchored, rooted, established, and settled in the truth of God's word. And friends, as we're anchored in God's word, that means we are steadfast, we are uh, unmovable, we will abound in the things of God, you see, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so we're going to need the power of God. Uh, We're going to need the the very uh, essence of the presence of God, the anointing in our lives. And we're going to need the anointing to be active in our lives. Because the things that we're that we're facing and the things that are facing us are going to require you all is going to place a demand upon the power of God that is latent within us. We are going to need to be able to having done all to stand as Ephesians six declares to stand, therefore, having on the whole armor of God. Everybody say it out loud. We are going to need to stand having the whole armor of God on, placing on the armor by faith. Friends, if there's ever been a time where God's people are going to need to stand and literally walk by faith, it's now. The, uh, with the advent of the, this pestilence that we're dealing with, this plague that we're dealing with, Friends, we're going to need to have an active faith, not a, not, a, not, a, uh, not a dormant faith, but an active faith, a living faith, a living faith in a living God. The good news is that God is alive. Hallelujah. And if we need our faith animated, then we need to connect with him. We need to hook up with God. We need to anchor ourselves in the faith of God. Amen. And let him charge up our faith like a battery. Uh, I want you to go again, Romans 10 and uh, verse number six. It says, but the righteousness which comes by faith, which is a faith, speaketh on this wise, like this. It says, look, don't, don't, don't say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. Or don't say who shall descend into the depths, into the deep. That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh or near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture declares, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now, in the context of this is saying, whosoever believes on him for salvation shall not be ashamed. Amen. In other words, friends, there'll be no need to be ashamed because you will receive what you're believing for. I mean, no, there's no need to be ashamed when you're receiving what you're believing for. Well, in this hour, in the era of COVID-19, y'all, we are to believe that we receive not only divine health, but also divine power to stand against these things and to stand firmly and strong and confident even when those around us are running afraid. In other words, y'all, we're to walk in faith when everybody else around us is walking in fear. We're to walk and believe God even when others are not believing God. We are to stand on the, the word of God, the, the, the exclusively on the word of God, nothing added, nothing taken away from. We're to stand on the integrity of God's word, knowing that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. 
This is the reason we can have confidence because God cannot lie. Everybody say that loud. God cannot lie. Because God cannot lie, you all, he can be trusted. And if he can be trusted, then we have something on which a basis on which to anchor our faith. And friend, again, that's the integrity of God's word. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away before one word of God will fail. He said before one jot, one tittle, one cross of her T, one dot of an I, heaven and earth, y'all, will pass away before one word from God will fail. And so, friends, this is where this is where the body of Christ must find its voice. The body of Christ must find its faith. The body of Christ must find its footing. Because we are the only entity, and I'll say this again, because it's worth declaring again. We are the only entity in the earth, the body of Christ, the believers, those who have faith like Father Abraham. We are the only entity in the earth. That's authorized, that's deputized, and that's immunized to stand against the work and operation of our enemy, the devil. In other words, you all, we are not to run afraid of anything. Why? Not because of who we are necessarily, but because of whose we are. And because of who lives in us. First John 4 and 4 declares that we, we are of God, little children, and have overcome them. That is the spirits of Antichrist. Why? Because greater is he that is where? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Well, who's in the world? Who's the God of this world? According to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, Satan, the devil, is the God of this world. Greater is he that is in us, greater is the God in us, greater is Yahuwah in us than Satan, the devil, Lucifer, that's in the world. So this is why we're not to be afraid, neither are we to be ashamed of, of who we are, of whose we are. Not ashamed to, to declare that we're standing on God's word. Amen. Amen. That we're not bowing down. We're not backing down. We're not rolling over. We're not giving in. We're, we're, we're not capitulating to the enemy. Rather, we're standing firm on the truth and the integrity of God's word. God cannot lie, friends. And so we take and make our stand on God's word. This is why we're not to be afraid of evil tidings. The, the word of God declares this. We are not to be afraid of evil tidings. In other words, evil news, bad news. We're not to be afraid of that. Why are we not to be afraid? Because there's somebody greater than you and I. There's a rock that's higher than we are. And when we recognize that our faith is in that rock, that rock is Christ, you see. The eternal God is our father. And so, since he's the most high God, there's nothing higher, is it? So when everybody else is running afraid of the evil news and the evil tidings about this, uh, you're going to die from COVID-19 or you're going to get sick and, and uh, your lungs are going to fill up and you won't be able to breathe and you're going to get pneumonia and you're going to choke to death and, and, and literally suffocate and suffer and die. When we hear the, that news, friends... It goes in one ear and out the other because our faith is not in that report. Our faith in the, is in this report. Amen. Amen. Last I read in this report, Isaiah 53 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, uh, and afflicted a man of God, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But you know what? It says that, that his, by his stripes we are healed. Say, by his stripes, we are healed and made whole. Hallelujah. Can you praise God for that? That by his stripes, the stripes of Christ that he took on his back when he went to the cross, you see, when he went to the tree 
And he was hung on that tree and he was crucified for us. And blood and water flowed out of his side. The blood for our sins and that water signifying the, the washing of water by the word that we received today. Hallelujah. Thank God, friends, that by his stripes we are healed. We know that our God, our Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach, we know that, that he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, according to Matthew 8, 17. So, friends, we live and operate then according to the scriptures. What does God's word say on the matter? So no matter what the situation is, what does the word say on the matter? And we, we stand firmly. We anchor our faith in God's unchangeable word. And friends, we become ourselves steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. Hallelujah. Knowing that our faith is not in vain in the Lord. Our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Can you say amen to that? And so what is the work of God? Many came to the Messiah himself in his day when he was walking the earth and they said, Master, what shall we do to work the work of God? And he said, uh, uh, only believe. Hallelujah. Only believe. And you shall see the glory of God. Everybody say it out loud. Only believe. Say it out loud. The Messiah said, only believe. And you shall see the glory of God. Friends, only believe today. We, this is our time. This is our hour. This is our moment to stand and shine. Let our light so shine before men that the world will see that we're not afraid. And, and again, don't get it twisted, friends. We're not afraid. We're not uh, afraid based on our own human proclivities or our own human uh, uh, deductions or our own human hubris or natural human pride. Friend, that pride will bring you low. Pride goes before destruction, the Bible says, and a haughty spirit before a fall. So there, there is a fine line, or actually a, a well-defined line, between human hubris and impudence and arrogance, and just sheer childlike faith and confidence in the integrity of God's word. I don't know about y'all friends, but I choose to walk in that childlike faith. Faith like a child. He's my father and he's not going to let anything harm me. He's not going to let any play come nigh my dwelling place. He's been watching over me all these years. He's not stopping now. Hallelujah. Childlike faith. Can you say amen to that? Look, that doesn't mean acting like children, you understand. The Bible tells us to be mature in the things of God. Amen. But a childlike faith is just an innocent faith. Just a faith that will say, you know what? I, it's a simple faith. It's, a, it's not a complex, it's not a convoluted faith. It's not a layered faith. It's just a simple faith. Did God say it? And if God said it, bless God, that settles it. Therefore, I believe it. Can you say amen to that? How many glad today that by his stripes we're healed and made whole, you see. And so faith comes by hearing. Uh, as I've said before, look over there. We're already in Romans 10. Look at verse 17. Amen. Y'all still here? Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing. Yes. And what? Hearing by the Word of God. So say that loud. Say this with me. So then faith cometh by hearing, not by having heard. Say it again. Faith cometh by hearing, not by having heard. One more time. Faith cometh by hearing, not by having heard. You know, some people may say, well, I've heard that before. Well, yeah, but you need to hear it again. And in fact, the connotation here is that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. So today's word is OK for today, but you're going to need some word tomorrow. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So we need to hear the word every single day. Amen. amen. We need to get in the word every single day. Amen. amen. 
We need to strengthen our faith every day. Amen. What produces faith? The word. If we if we if our faith is weak and victory seems lost, how can we get it back? God's word. Get in the word, friends, and the word will get in you. That will strengthen your spirit, man, you see. The word of God declares that the spirit of a man sustains his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. That's in the Proverbs. Say it out loud. A man's spirit sustains his infirmity or weakness, but a wounded spirit who can bear. In other words, y'all, when you're strong in spirit, when you wax strong in spirit, friends, that power from within will sustain you and strengthen you. Even if sickness is trying to attach itself to your body, your, the power of God in you begins to work from the inside out to strengthen your body from the inside. In other words, y'all, when Satan comes from the outside, to bring sickness and disease and infirmity. We must rise up on the inside. And operate by faith in faith from the inside out. And say bless God I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I touch. I'm not moved by what I smell. I'm moved only by the word of God, that's what I believe in. That, friends, is faith. And God says, if you can believe, all things are possible. Amen. Say it out loud. God said, not man, if you can believe, if you can believe, he says, all things are possible. So the question becomes, can you believe? And if somebody says, well, I'm just having struggle. If, I'm, if you're struggling to believe, God's given us an answer even for that. What's the remedy for unbelief? Get in this word. And this word will produce faith. Faith comes by what? Look at verse 17 again. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing and Hearing and hearing and hearing, hearing what? Word. Word of God. Amen. Friends, these seats in this building ought to be packed out. Because people need to hear the word of faith, the word of God to produce faith in them. So that they can go out and deal with this enemy's onslaught, this juggernaut that's coming against us. Friends, we, we must be full of the faith of God and full of the word of God. Friends, you get full of the word, you'll be full of faith. Because the word produces faith. Can you say amen to that? How many things are possible if you can believe? All things. Amen. So friends, we need to be strong in faith, giving glory to God, just like Father Abraham was. You read in Romans uh, 4, that Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Friends, we must be strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what God has said, God is able to perform. This is why we're not afraid or ashamed to declare we are believers. Everybody say it out loud. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. So I'm a believer and not a doubter. I believe God's word. I can overcome. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are therefore not afraid of evil tidings. We're not afraid of bad news. I'll say it again, friends. We just read Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. But faith also leaves by hearing. And if you're hearing the wrong thing, friend, your faith will leave. Are y'all here? 
It'll take wings, it'll take flight, and it'll leave you. It'll fly away from you. But friends, the people of God in this hour, those that are called, anointed, and appointed for such a time as this, friends, we're people of faith. We believe. Amen. And friends, we're not ashamed to declare that we believe. We stand on God's word and God's word only. We stand on the word of God and not the senses. Amen. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So notice again uh, in uh, verse number six. It says the righteousness, which is of faith. Talks like this or speak it on this wise. Do not say in your heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to go get God out of heaven. Or who will descend into the deep. That is go down to the depths and bring Christ back up from the dead. You see the righteousness which is of faith says we don't have to go to heaven to get him. We don't have to go into the depths to bring him back up. Because faith says he is already nigh us now. In other words, yes, he is. He is in heaven. He is. He dwells in the third heaven above the firmament. Amen. But faith says, I don't have to go way up there to get it. <laughs> faith says, I don't have to go way down here to get it. The word of faith says he's right here near me. Friends, he's as near to you as your next breath. He has come to dwell on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. But what saith it, verse 8? The word is what? Nigh thee, near thee, even where? In thy mouth and in thy heart. How close is your mouth to you? I mean, it's right there attached to you, isn't it? How close is your heart? You see, he, he's come to dwell in us. Yes? And so your mouth and your heart must agree together. So you, you meditate in this word, saturate your heart in this word, and your mouth will follow. Because you'll speak what you truly believe, friends. Out of the abundance of the heart, the scriptures declare, the mouth speaks. Amen. So if people are always speaking about how we're so afraid of COVID-19, we're afraid of, of, of contracting this disease. We're afraid uh, that if we don't do everything just right, if we don't do everything they're telling us to do just right, the way they told us to do it, somehow we're going to get this. And, and people are saying this. They're, they're saying this. Well, y'all, they're saying what they believe. You, your mouth and your heart will stay together. You will declare out of your mouth what you truly believe in your heart. So what should we be saying then? We should be saying what the word says. We should be saying exactly the same thing that God says about us. Can you say amen to that? Hebrews 10 and 23 declares, hold fast your confession of faith without wavering. For God is faithful that promised. See, we're not to be double-minded friends. We're to be single-minded. And meditating in this word, according to Joshua 1 and 8, will cause us to uh, prosper in uh, Wherever we go. Amen. It'll cause us. We, you meditate in his word day and night and uh, observe to do according to all that's written therein. He said, then, Joshua, you shall make your way prosperous. And then, Joshua, you will have good success. How many know we'll have good success if we believe God's word? Amen. Amen. So the word is not the verse eight near you. It's right there in your mouth. That's pretty close, isn't it? And where in your heart, friends, we must implant we must embed we must put god's word in our hearts friends that means meditating in the word that means saying the word over and over to ourselves this keeps our spirit man saturated in the word so that when it's time to make a demand on the power of god our faith is already ready to roll in other words, friends, fill up now, fill up now on the word and in faith so that when the world makes a demand on you, when circumstances make a demand on you, you've got something to pull from. 
When the world makes a demand on us, we make a demand on God, on his power. Hallelujah. That's what happened in the days of Moses when uh, Moshe, when he was leading God's people out of Israel. The people would begin to murmur, gripe and complain because they were uncomfortable and they would go to Moses. They wouldn't go to God. They would go to Moses and complain to him, you see. And then Moses would have to turn around and go to God with the people's complaints. So they would go to Moses and Moses would have to go to God. Friends, when the world comes to you with all kinds of problems and issues and, and, and cares of this life and deceitfulness of riches and lust of other things that come to choke the word, we must go to God. We must go to the word, friends, and understand that persecution and affliction comes for the word's sake. And we must Fortify in this word so that this word can germinate in us and it can produce the fruit. The seeds planted will produce fruit in our lives and even a tree that will grow like a mustard seed into a great tree that even the birds can come and nest and build homes in because it's grown so uh, from the good soil in our heart of the word of God. Hallelujah. So friends, we've got to impart the word. Amen. Say it out loud. I must impart the word. In my heart. You see, friends, it's in your mouth and in your heart. That's the word of faith which Paul preached and we preach. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall receive what he said, what the word says you would receive. This is how we got saved. This is how we'll get filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is how we'll navigate through life. When, the, when things come against you, you declare, what does the word of God say? Amen. When the enemy comes and says, I'm going to kill you, you're going to get COVID-19 and you're going to die. We rise up and say, no, devil, you're lying. I'm not going to die. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. In other words, you counter the enemy's lies with God's truth. When the enemy comes to your mind, and he will, he'll whisper in your mind and during, in a time of weakness and a lot of times in a time of, of the flesh, the, the reality of it is, y'all, in our human weakness and frailty and flesh, uh, frail, frailties and weaknesses and works of the flesh trying to get, to get to operating in you and you're not walking in the spirit like you should, that's when all these kind of crazy thoughts come and you start entertaining them. And the devil starts telling you what all he's going to do. He tell, he's telling you what all he's going to uh, accomplish in your life and how you'll never amount to anything. And he'll tell you you need to kill yourself because life's not worth living. Uh, he'll lie to you and tell you that you'd never be anything. He'll lie to you and tell you that God's mad at you, that God hates you, and that you'll never get anywhere with God. He'll lie and tell you that you'll never overcome situations or circumstances or addictions, things that you've, had, you've struggled with all your life. You'll never get over these things. You'll never be delivered. How I many know the devil's a liar? You can stand up and say, no, devil, you're lying. I reject that thought. I cast down that imagination. You see, I cast down that thought. Friends, thoughts will come from the inside and the out. That's why you got to get the word in so that it can clean up your inside thoughts. And then when the devil brings you those dirty outside thoughts, you'll have the power to cast them down. First Corinthians 10 declares casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, friends, the knowledge of God is found in the word of God. So everything that exalts itself against the word of God, we bring in every thought into captivity. We bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Friends, that's mastering your mind. That's mastering your thoughts, you see. If the enemy can't have your thoughts, if he can't have your mind, he can't have you. This is why God said in Romans 12 to renew our minds in the word of God. Let this word metamorphosize our minds and, and cause us to think in line with God, to think God's thought after him. Can you say amen? Friends, it is vital. It is imperative. Friends, I would even venture to say it's going to be life and death for us. It's going to be life and death for us to get this word in our, in our inner man. How much are you going to prosper in the things that are coming down the pike, even as things get worse and worse, 
The degree that you will prosper will be the degree that you get this word in and the degree that you walk in faith, believing, believing God for the impossible. Believing that how big is my God? My God is bigger than anything the enemy can throw at me. I can overcome anything. So what if the doctor comes to you and says that uh, you're going to die? You have this disease, you have this, that disease, and you're going to die. Some, someone in you, I was going to say something in you, actually, is someone in you will rise up and say, no devil, I shall live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord. That's when you've been fortifying in the word. Amen. That's when you take God's word only as the truth, not what you feel. We believe God. Not our feelings. You don't have to feel good to believe God. Friend, you don't have to feel strong to be strong. You don't have to feel strong to be strong. Hallelujah. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and Yahuwah and in the power of his might. Can you say amen to that? Listen, the scripture says, verse 11, that whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Friends, we're going to have to be strong in faith, not just for ourselves. We're going to have to be strong in faith for our family. We're going to have to be strong in faith for our children. We're going to have to be strong in faith for our neighbors, for our community. We're going to have to be strong in faith, friends, for the, our fellow members of the body of Christ. Uh, friend, there are going to be times when people want to come to you. They're, they're going through something and, and they come to you. They believe you can get a prayer through you're going to have to get a prayer through. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to have to believe that you can get a prayer through. You're going to have to know that you can get a prayer through. You're going to have to know that God hears you when you pray. Yes. Fortify and fellowship with God enough. Saturate your heart in God's word enough to where you're confident in your own prayers. You're confident in the God that you pray to. That you're confident that whatever, whatever I ask in prayer believing, I shall receive. Hallelujah. Notice there in, uh, in verse 11 again, for the scripture says, Romans 10, 11, y'all still there? Let's read it together. For the scripture declares, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Glory to God. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Yahuwah over all is rich. Unto all that call upon him. Notice it didn't say he's poor. It didn't say he's lacking. It said he's rich. Glory to God. In other words, y'all, he can supply anything that we can make a demand on his ability for. Hallelujah. Friend, whatever your faith can demand, that can make a demand of God on. He's rich to supply. And he never runs.